All right, you guys, so as I was looking through here, it really feels to me like number five and six, number seven and eight are going to be very, very good test questions. Nothing weird going on. Number four was a little weird, but um, let's check this out, okay? All right, so again, note this is the graph of the derivative of f, not the graph of f. They will usually write that like a bunch of times just to make sure that you realize that. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function. The domain is a set of all real numbers between negative 10 and 10. So I might want to just remind myself this is on a closed interval. For what values of x does the graph of f have a horizontal tangent? Okay, I'll be a little careful here. This is a not too bad of a question, but you have to actually figure out what they're asking. f of x has a horizontal tangent when the derivative is zero. Okay? So this is important. I don't want you to get confused and go, look, I can see the horizontal tangents. There's there, there, and there. Those are not, those are the horizontal tangents of f prime. But to find the horizontal tangents of f, it is where f prime equals zero, which is here, 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 and here. These are also known as critical points. So where the graph of f has a horizontal tangent, where the derivative is zero, which is also how we find like our critical points. So f x has a horizontal tangent when f prime of x equals zero. So x equals negative seven, negative one, four, and eight is where f of x has horizontal tangents, okay? All right, awesome. Then next it asks, for what values of x in the interval negative 10 to 10, does f have a relative max? Well, let's go ahead and put my zeros on here. They were negative 7, negative 1, 4, and 8. And remember, these are the points where the derivative is equal to 0. Okay? So as I go through here, um, if I were to test any points between negative 10 and negative 7, it would be below the graph. If I were to test any points here, they would be above the graph. If I tested any points between negative 1 and 4, it would be below. Any points between 4 and 8 would be above, and any points from 8 to 10 would be below, okay? And so I can kind of draw it like this, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So it's asking me for relative maximums. F has relative max at x equals here and here negative 1 and x equals 8 because okay uh, because f prime of x is changing from positive to negative okay and then part c for what value of x is the graph of f concave downward? Well, we need to do a sine line graph on the second derivative. And I remember that the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. So as I'm looking at slopes, these slopes go to 0 here, which looks like negative 3. Here, which looks like 2 here, which looks like 6. So I made this one a little too close. There we go. Okay. And if I think about my guy hitting the slopes, okay, he's going uh, positive, and then down the mountain, negative, and up the mountain, and then down the mountain. All right. And so, uh, let's see, I am concave up, where it's plus and concave down where it's minus. So I'm going to say f of x is concave down on the interval negative 3 to 2 and 
6 to 10. That's it. I feel like those people taking this test in 1989 were like, ooh, I got this, let's go. They felt so confident because it's just very, very straightforward. It's a little bit before the year I took it, so, you know, a little bit older than me, but, all right. Hopefully that will make sense to you. I feel like that was pretty straightforward. Okay, let's take a look at number six. Once again, this is a graph of the derivative, not the graph of f. The figure above shows a graph of the derivative. Da, 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 all real numbers from negative three to five. I mean, that just tells me it's like open negative three and five. It's not closed circles. You don't have to draw open circles. Just don't draw closed circles and concentrate yourself. Okay, for what values of x does it have a relative maximum? Well, let's go ahead and make our sine line graph over here. We're going from negative 3 to 5. And I know that the zeros are where it actually hits 0. Okay, so negative 2, 1, and 4. And then when I test values in between negative 3 and negative 2, those are positive values. Negative 2 to 1 are negative values. 1 to 4 are negative values again, and 4 to 5 are positive. So it goes increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing. All right, so it decreases more towards the middle. So I'm going to say f of x has a relative max at x equals negative 2 because f prime of x changes from positive to negative. Okay, so that's part A, and then part B, which I'm using the same sine line graph, so I'll go ahead and just include it here. F of x has a relative min at x equals 4, right here, right, because F prime is changing from negative to positive. Super easy, super straightforward. I've done a million of those. You guys definitely got that, right? You guys definitely got that. Okay. On what intervals is the graph of f concave upward? Use f prime to justify your answer. All right, this is a little tricky. Um, we're going to do it even though this isn't going to be on, like, your test. Coming up, we will do it so you can see how this will work. All right, so we're definitely going to be able to get the answer here. We know we're going to draw a sine line graph of f double prime from negative 3 to 5. Okay. Um, oh, we know that, and those little dotted lines are like, yeah, it's actually, you know, a horizontal tangent at negative 1, 1, and 3. And then it's just like open at 5. So negative 1, 1, and 3. And then when I check out, you know, my, uh, my skiing guy, we are going down the slopes, up the slopes, down the slopes, up the slopes, okay? What interval is the graph concave upward? So I would say f of x is concave up on the interval negative 1 to 1 and 3 to 5. Now normally our reason is going to be because f double prime is positive on those intervals. That's what our reason is going to be. But it wants me to justify it using f prime, not f double prime. So check it out. Usually we would say because, I'm going to write it and then I'm going to erase it and show you what we're going to do. f double prime is positive on those intervals. Okay, instead of saying f double prime is positive, negative 1 to 1, 3 to 5. Okay, let me, let me uh, erase this a little bit. Okay, and let's look at negative 1 to 1, 3 to 5. All right? So instead of saying f double prime, I'm going to erase that and write f prime because now I'm just fine with f prime. Now f double prime was positive, but what is f prime in doing? You can see it right here, okay? What is f prime doing here to here? And here to here, it's increasing. 
So instead of saying because f double prime is positive, we can actually say because f prime is increasing. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, that, that's not going to be like on your test right now, but if it wants you to justify it with f prime instead of f double prime, you have to figure out what the words mean. And f double prime positive meant the slope of f prime was positive, which means slope is derivative and derivative is positive is increasing. Oof, okay? But otherwise, I think a pretty straightforward um, question. And then here's our last part. We love these, right? These are kind of fun. Suppose that f of 1 is 0. That's all it's giving me. Yep, nothing from the beginning. Don't forget that we cannot go past negative 3 and 5. Oh, it actually only wants me to show the shape from 0 to 2. So I don't even have to show the whole thing. So that's easy. Okay, so from 0 to 2, let's see what's going to happen. Well, starting at 0, it decreases. Well, actually, here, let's see here. 0 is about right, right here, and 2 is about right here. So it's decreasing the whole time. Oh, shoot, i got to go through that point. Decreasing the whole time from 0 to 2, okay? Um, but from 0 to 1, it's concave up, and from 1 to 2, it's concave down. So my graph is actually going to switch from concave up to concave down. So we just want that little section, and we don't have to put like endpoints on the end or anything like that. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and pose these, and then we'll do our last two questions, guys.